Keep Sharp by Dr. Sanjay Gupta. This book is less about improving intelligence or IQ and more about propagating brain cells and making the ones you have work more efficiently. It's less about performing well on exams and executing tasks, although that will be easier. In Keep Sharp, you will learn to connect patterns that the brain might typically miss. And this will help you better navigate life. This man has been in the black box. Is that what they call it? He's researched the brain for decades and decades and decades. When you check out these books, you are compressing decades into days. And now he's more convinced than ever that the brain can be changed and enhanced and fine-tuned. By the end of the intro, I found myself enjoying where this man's head is at. He seems understanding, genuine, and he doesn't seem to be tethered to any certain like way of thinking or studies. This or that doesn't exactly work, but he's also not like, the world is falling apart and only you can prevent forest fires or something. <laughs> it's this optimistic yet realistic approach for me, and I had a feeling this would be that this would be a dense book, but is the book good? What, what, like everything I just described, does he actually accomplish the description of that? Let's talk about it. My name is Samuel and I want to make self-growth normal. Welcome to my channel. Uh, if you want to make self-growth normal, because I don't want to do it alone, then make sure to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. This guy is a neurosurgeon. If I hadn't said it like three times already, he has decades of experience. When I started watching um, Grey's Anatomy with my girlfriend, all surgeons have like a specialty. So like there's like pediatrics, there's plastic, like plastic surgery. There's general and she asked me what I would go into personally if I were if I were a surgeon I would go into neuro and my answer isn't just neuro because dr. Shepard is a badass character But because of this chapter, it's called what makes you you this chapter dives into the intricacies and the complexities of the human brain in a way that I never ever heard elsewhere. Watching the brain of someone who is singing a song in a functional MRI is like watching a light show on a clear night sky I and mean, yet we know people with even advanced dementia who can still sing songs from their childhood without a problem. In cognitive decline redefined amino acids, beta analoids, L-serine. This is the most complicated chapter for me. This is where things got a little bit too technical for me to easily understand. I don't think most of this book's readers or listeners are going to understand this chapter as easily as others. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just projecting. Excuse my projection. The clouds of complexity sort of open up and part ways in 12 destructive myths and five pillars that build you. I really like the destructive myths though, like, like myths that he disproves about how dementia is a normal part of aging. You can only master one language at a time. The only one I really remember hearing at some point before was that we only use 10% of our brains. So some of them I've heard before, but maybe the, the, these are like pretty relatively popular myths. Yet I really like how he talks about them because it's like, it's genuine. It's not bitter. It's like, it's kind of like, well, there is a little bit of a grain of truth to this, but the miracle of moving, that chapter is all about exercise. Exercise is the single most important thing that you can do to enhance your brain's function and resiliency to disease. Scientists have said that exercise can actually perform the same function as much, if not more effectively, than an antidepressant. So anyone who's had bad experiences with antidepressants and is still depressed, please take note. I am prescribed for antidepressants and I cannot relate. The reason why is another video topic, but it's not genetic. In the power of purpose, learning and discovery, this chapter touches upon cognitive reserve and brain resiliency, which are so much cooler than they probably sound upon face value. A lot in this book, he talks about like cognitive like brain decline at the end of this chapter i realized that a lot of this book like for its own the sake of its own points like it relies heavily on like testimonials from very like well researched doctors and pioneers and field leaders but again it's hopeful it's helpful it's smooth it's not this sleazy slits sleazy 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 salesman's approach but don't take my word for it when i asked dr ghazali i think adam ghazali about the one thing everyone can do to preserve brain function and prevent neurodegenerative decline his advice will sound familiar to you lead a rich active dynamic complex life I can't argue with that. Ghazali has multiple games in development that are undergoing the rigors of clinical trials, and he's hopeful that the FDA approved games will one day be on the market and just as important as any drug. The chapter, The Need for Sleep and Relaxation. For information that's found in this chapter times 10, by the way, the book I'm just about to recommend, the author mentions it once or twice in this chapter. 
Check out Why We Sleep by neuroscientist Matthew Walker. In food for thought, as you can imagine, the information in this book is based on quite recent data. I mean, like, this guy is super well-versed in his field. I actually haven't heard of him in a while since that uh, one documentary he put out on medical marijuana use. But this book just came out like a week or so ago. So it, this, is, this is 2021. It's fresh. It's cool. And I will admit, sleeping well, exercising, eating well, these are things that were horrifyingly and uninterestingly and unengagingly taught to us to apply to our lives at young ages. Is that a grammatical sentence? <laughs> I don't think this book is meant to be like a breakthrough. It's mainly about the neuroscientific benefits of these things that we've overlooked and how that links to everything else. Like that's what so much of this book is about. If you're really looking for reasons to work out more or eat healthier that you weren't taught as a child, I can assure you that there is something in this book that fits that description. Again, the information is not outdated. Like in this chapter, he talks about intermittent fasting and dietary supplements in connection for protection. And with everything he described, he does the same exact thing with socialization. In diagnosing and treating an ailing brain, given what I now know about dementia and Alzheimer's, I think stigmatization is the main obstacle in the way of family and friends of those with conditions to actually live a more vibrant and healthy life post-diagnosis. A few decades ago, no one wanted to talk about cancer. No one. Today, cancer patients take pride in talking about their illness and forging ahead with resolve. We are on the cusp of transforming how we view dementia. People with dementia can live a healthy life as long as 20 years after diagnosis. To me, what's extraordinary about this book isn't just how evident the author's passion is for a world where effective dementia treatment exists. Like, until that's the case, he wants us to know everything that anyone can easily do to prevent it. And when we have it, what to keep in mind? Uh, I don't know how easy that'll be, but what to do, who to go to, what tests to take. These are the tools we have to face one of the scariest challenges that a lot of our world may experience today. I think the author said that as many as 15 million people in the country right now, the US, are intimately connected or they know someone very personally who has dementia or some form of it. That is so scary. If you know a thing or two about dementia and what it even looks like to have, it is super, super scary. No one wants to lose his or her mind. With navigating the path forward financially and emotionally with a special note to caregivers, here's one part that stood out. I had to ask the co-founder of Von Hauschwick, this super nice Dutch nursing home, like almost otherworldly, like it's really hard to believe that it even exists. If this setup is somehow fooling or duping its residents, she was quick to respond. Why should they feel they are fooled? We have a society here. We want to help people enjoy life and feel that they are welcome here on this earth. It was one of the most humane things I had heard, allowing people to retain their dignity even as the end is near. She recalled that when her father died of a heart attack several years prior, one of the first things that went through her mind was, thank God he never had to be in a nursing home. My girlfriend has worked in multiple nursing homes actually. Here and there she would run into the sweetest people you would ever meet. But aside from that, you would not believe the horror story stories, <laughs> let alone the turnover. And let's face it, everyone's underpaid nowadays, like honestly, but you would not believe how low the wages are for that type of work. This was with dementia patients, by the way. Sure, it's doable, but very challenging work. I'm just glad that a bestseller on Audible like this one is so diligently and concisely spreading ideas why and that it doesn't have to be. Quotes. The brain is wider than the sky and deeper than the sea. Has a doctor ever reminded you to take good care of your brain besides the importance of wearing a helmet while riding a bicycle? Probably not. Fear-based messaging will never lead to an effective strategy because it is not the way we are wired. Exercise can act as a first aid kit for damaged brain cells, speeding up recovery after injury, stroke, or significant emotional stress. I don't know of a single pill that can do all that. The only way to keep your health is to eat what you don't want, drink what you don't like, and do what you'd rather not. Everyone is entitled to his opinion, but not to his own facts. Apparently, high socialization is akin to a vital sign. Direction 1. I recommend this book for anyone who is interested in neurocognition. Or anyone who's just very scared of getting dementia. There is hope, okay? Direction 2. If you like this book, you might like... This is actually one of those books that I don't have that many recommendations for, but... I'm not the most well-versed human being in this field, but Brain Maker by David Perlmutter, Dr. David Perlmutter. I really, really like that book about how the brain is like, it's now like the second gut and how you can use that information to treat neurological disorders using things that are not, well, 
just straight up pills. Keep Sharp by Dr. Sanjay Gupta. There's a link in the description if you guys want to check it out and read the reviews. That and all the other books that I mentioned in this video if you want to check those out too. If you guys buy anything through the links in the description then I get commission which helps me build this channel and keep making these videos. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review please let me know in the comments below. Also let me know if you checked out this book and you liked it but hey make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already because I don't get why people watch this far into my videos and they don't subscribe, but if you have subscribed and you want to turn it up just a notch and turn on that notification bell to get a notification whenever I drop new videos, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.